Hello everybody, Kyle here, an engineer from Vancouver, British Columbia. Today we're going to be going over another OpenCV tutorial using C++. And more specifically, we're going to be using our newfound knowledge of image processing to build our very own motion-activated surveillance camera. Now here's a little preview of what our program is going to look like when all is said and done today. You can see that once there's motion detected in the camera's field of vision, the program then starts recording and it'll save to a, a video file on the hard drive and you'll be able to open it up at the end of the day if you run it for the whole day and view all the activity that's happened on your camera. So I'm going to open up the resulting video file from the example that I just showed you. Now I live near a reasonably busy street so I thought hey why not why not point it out there the there's always cars going by so at least at least we'll see some activities out there and be able to test the camera's functionality. Some of the features that you'll notice is that a the camera is only recording when there is motion on the screen and as well we've added a little date and time stamp in the bottom left corner just much like a CCTV camera or a closed circuit television camera and that's used for surveillance. Now I mentioned earlier that we're going to be applying some of our knowledge that we've learned and saying that I'm, I hope that most of you have gone over the previous videos, one in which we learn how to write to a video file and the other one which we learn about motion tracking. And if you haven't had a chance yet, I strongly recommend you click at least at least breeze over the videos and try and get a good idea of what we're trying to accomplish here. So yeah, go ahead and click on one of the videos if you like. Uh, it'll open in a new window and will not interrupt this tutorial. So let's start off today's lesson as we always do by downloading the source file from below. We're then going to set up our Visual Studio project and get started on some coding. All right, so open up Visual Studio and we're going to create a new project. I ensure that we're on Win32 console application and we're going to call our project Surveillance Cam. And click OK. Then on the next window we're going to click Next and ensure that we have console application selected and then we're going to click on Empty Project and click Finish. And as previously taught in the installation guide, we're going to navigate to the property manager. You can click on this pane or view property manager. And we're going to link our OpenCV libraries using our previously made property sheet. Now if you right click on debug here and add existing property sheet. And I usually keep mine in my main projects folder for Visual Studio 2010 so that I don't lose them. I've named mine OpenCV Debug 249. That's the latest version. If you use any other version above version 2.0, it's going to work fine with this tutorial, so don't worry about that. All right, so navigate back to the Solution Explorer, and we're going to add in the source file that we downloaded earlier. Uh, right click and copy it, and we're going to head to My Documents, and then Visual Studio 2010. Let me look for it here. And then Projects and scroll down to surveillance cam which we just created. Just navigate one more folder in and we'll paste it in here. Alright so now we'll head back to Visual Studio and we'll right click on source files and add existing item. We see our source file that we just copied into the folder. Double click it and open it up. Alright so here's our code. As mentioned before, it is a combination of the two tutorials that I presented earlier. One in which we learned about writing to a video file, and the other one in which we learned about motion tracking. And if you could imagine, what we're going to do is use the motion tracking to signal to the video recorder that we would like to record. So what we're doing is using the motion tracking software that we've written to automate the recording process. In doing that we're going to only record when there is motion on the screen and therefore it functions exactly like a motion activated security camera. Now before we run our program let's, uh, let's take a quick peek through the code here. Scroll down to the detect motion function and this is where we're going to see if there's any movement in the video feed. Now before this function is called, we perform the method of sequential images, which was taught in the previous tutorial about motion tracking. We're then given a threshold image, which we pass to this detect motion function. 
In this detect motion function, we have called the find contours function, which is then going to output a, a vector of contours. But if we compare this function, which I've trimmed down to only detect motion, if we, if we look side by side in the function from the motion tracking tutorial, you can see that right after we check for the contour's size being greater than zero, we have all this other code in which we use to, to actually track the object. But we don't need to track the object in this, in this case. All we need to do is check whether or not the contour's vector even has anything in it. And if it does, then we know that there's, there's something moving on the screen and we can set our, our motion detected Boolean variable to true. And I hope that explanation wasn't too terribly complicated, but I just thought I'd explain kind of the changes that I've made to the code before before moving on. Now the next piece of code that we're going to be looking at, if you scroll down a little bit further, is where we're doing our video recording. Now I have my file path saved as at the D directory. If you don't have a D directory on your computer or you'd like to save the file somewhere else, you can go ahead and change this. Another thing to note is that we have our video writer object initialized and our four character code is div3 which we learned about in the previous tutorial about video writing. So if you have any questions about video writing you can just head back over to that video. And for the rest of us it's, I think it's time to click and compile the program and test it out. Alright so you can see the video feed here. This scene should look familiar from the clip that I showed at the beginning. You can see that the motion tracking is working as promised. And what you'll also see is that you're going to have to press R to record. So once you press R, it'll stop and start the recording. And what we aim to do, as I said earlier, is to is to automate this. So when there is motion detected on, on, on the video feed, we're going to start and stop the recording. Another feature you can try out is if you press N, a new recording will be started. And if you, if you keep pressing N, you can keep making new videos if you want. Uh, the number will just increment from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So press the escape key to exit the program, and I'm just going to head over to the D directory to see if all the video files are, are saving and, and functioning properly. So it looks like everything is all good, and I'll, I'll click on my video zero to see if it opens up. And sure enough, everything is all good. Alright, so now that we've ensured that our program is functioning the way that we want to in its current state, let's, uh, let, let's start making some modifications to the code to, to get the look and the feel and the functionality of an actual security camera. So scroll down to the main function and in there you're going to find in the comments step one. Now what I've, what I've instructed here is that we're going to draw a timestamp to the bottom left corner. Now how we're, how we're going to achieve this is we're, we're going to first get the system time. So the time that you see in the bottom right hand corner of your Windows machine or whatever machine you're using. And then we're going to convert that time to, to a string. And we can work with this string easily and just use the OpenCV function put text to, to draw it to the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and explain how we're going to get the system time. If you scroll to the top, I've made a little helper function called getDateTime. And all I've done here is I've declared a system time variable. And I've also made a string and done a string stream where I can add leading zeros to things just to make it look like, like you'd actually see. Like I've written down in this example here, you wouldn't just see three, you'd see zero three. And that's all that is. You don't need to worry about that. Just to make it look a little nicer. Then I've, I've tied it all together by concatenating all these strings together to actually get a nice date and time stamp for you. So scroll back down to our step one. And all we're going to need to do is declare a string. And we're going to call this string date time. And we're going to set it equal to our helper function. So hit control space if you'd like to find the function. There it is. And close the brackets, semicolon, that's all you need. So next what we're going to do is we're going to draw this to the screen. And we're going to use the OpenCV function put text. So the first, the first argument here is asking for a matrix of pixels, and what we have is our video feed, which we, we save as frame 1. So let's draw to frame 1. The next argument is asking for a string of text, and we've made our date time string, so let's just copy and paste that into there. 
And our third our third argument here is is the point of origin of of the text of the string of text. So we need to figure this out and where we want to put it. I've drawn a little diagram here. So the way that OpenCV measures its 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 pixel range is from zero to whatever the frame size is in the x direction, and then zero to whatever the the y frame size is in 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 the downwards direction. So we would like to we would like to put ours in the bottom left hand corner. So we're going to want to have it at zero in the x and 480 in the y since we have a 640 by 480 video stream. So let's go ahead and declare a CV point here or capital P point and we're going to put it at 0 comma 480. The next argument is the font face. You don't need to worry about that. Just put 1 and our font scale. Let's put it around 2. Let's see how that turns out. It might be too big actually. We might have to come back to that. The next is the color. So make a CV scalar and we're gonna wanna we're gonna wanna color it black. So let's do let's do zero zero zero. And our next argument is the thickness. We don't need to worry about that. We'll just we'll just hit uh, clo close off the bracket and and try and and see what this looks like. So press F five to compile your program. And we'll see. Oh, our font's a little too big here. That's because we had the scale set to two. So we can quickly go back and change our scale to one. That's fine. Click F5 again. And there we have a nice a nice timestamp in the bottom left hand corner of our video feed. Perfect. Now some of you might be saying, "Hey, well, black text. That's kind of a." What if what if the scene's a little bit dark? How are you going to see that black text? Well, what we're going to do is before we draw the text to the screen, we're going to draw a white rectangle. So use the CV rectangle, uh, lowercase r. Be sure of that. It's just going to ask for our first argument as our matrix of pixels, which is our frame one. Second argument, it's going to be a, a rect object. So use CV rect, and the four the four arguments we need to pass in is the x and y origin so the top left hand corner of the of the of the rectangle that we're drawing and we want it to start right around here so that's at about y equals 460 and then we're going to span across roughly 200 pixels to an x an x value of 200 so how this relates to our uh, to, to our rect object is we're going to have to put in a 0 comma 460 origin and then we're going to have to span it 200 pixels wide and 20 pixels high to get it to it to, to the point that we want to. All right, so let's put in our values here, 0 and 460. And then our width is going to be 200 pixels and our height is going to be 20 pixels. Now for our color, if we put in a CV scalar, we had uh, black as 0, 0, 0. Well, white is the exact opposite end of the spectrum at 255, 255, 255. Now that we get to thickness, so this would be the, the outer border thickness. And if you set it to negative 1, it's going to fill in the object. So you want to set it to negative 1 so it has a filled in white rectangle. Let's just compile it and see, and see, what, see what it looks like. So that looks pretty good for us. That, that, that's exactly what we're looking for. So let's head back to the code. And one thing to note is that since our code runs sequentially, we have to make sure that we draw the rectangle before we write on top of it. Just keep that in mind. Other than that, I would say step one is complete. And since we have our nice date and time stamp in the left-hand corner, I think it's it's time to move on to step two. So scroll down and we're gonna we're gonna check out what step two has to say. Alright, so it says Set recording to true since there is motion in the video feed, or, or else recording should be set to false. So scroll back up here, and we're gonna we're gonna find out how we're actually gonna achieve this. So we earlier in the code we set a motion detected boolean variable to be equal to our detect motion function, the one that I was describing at the very beginning of this video. And since we have our motion detected boolean variable, we we check for it right here. 
So if there is motion detected, we're going to set our recording Boolean variable to true. And if, it's, if motion isn't detected, we'll make sure that we reset the Boolean variable to false. So now that we have our recording Boolean variable set to true, let's, let's go up and see what happens. So looping through this code, if, if recording equals true, we're going to create a, a video file and then we're going to write to it, just like we did in our, in our video writing tutorial. So, so click compile and we're going to, we're going to see, there, there we have it. Our, uh, our, our security camera is automated and is recording whenever it, it senses motion on the screen. And that's just fantastic. Now, as you can see, that, that wasn't too difficult to implement, especially if you were following along in the previous two tutorials. We're really just combining the two codes together directly and, and automating them. So we, we still have one step to go, and this is to actually automate our, our file names as well. So every time that we create a new video, we, want it to, we don't want it to just be named some generic name. We want it to actually be named uh, what, what the date and time is at, at that current moment. So we'll make a string video file name, same as below here, and we're going to set it equal to get date time for file. So I've I've made an extra a different a different helper function, slightly different than our than our previous one, and and the way that it differs is that in Windows you can't have a file name with a, a dash in it like this, or else it's just going to throw an error. So all I've done is re replace the dashes with with underscores. And, and, and through in our H, M, and S here, just, just so you can see the hour, minute, and seconds. And that's the only difference. It's, it's not too big of a difference. It's just in order to write to the file, you need to have it in this format. So let, that being said, let's, let's move back down to our, to our step three and finish writing our, our video file name. One thing that I should just touch on again is that we, we, need, to, we need to comment out this, this old one first before we, we write the new one. We, right now we only have the video file name, so we need to we need to actually give it a file path and also an extension. So if we just say video file name equals, I'm going to put it in the in the just in the D directory, so D colon forward slash and the quote, and then we'll concatenate itself. We'll concat concatenate the video file name, and then we'll also add on an extension. And if you watch the the video writing tutorial, we, we learned how to do a .avi file, so we'll, we'll, we'll stick with that. And compile your program. And if we check out this debug window in the top left here, we can see that it has created a video file at the D directory and the current time with the extension .avi. So if we let our, let our program run for a little while, I'll fast forward the video and then we'll, we'll check out what it looks like afterwards. All right, we've let it run for a little bit. Uh, one thing that I'm going to show you is that if if you press N for a new video, it's actually it, it can make another video. It's going to start a new. It's going to save the old one and start a new video sequence. So you you can go ahead and use that feature. If you if you'd like to exit the program safely, you have you need to press you need to press the escape key. You can't just stop debugging. You actually have to quit the program properly. So if you don't do that, the the video file is going to be a bit corrupt. So just make sure you watch out for that. Another thing to note is that if you want to use the buttons for control, you need to make sure that the that the video frame is in the is in the focus of the mouse. So if it's out of focus, you need to click on it again and, and get it back in focus. Alright, so let's head to our D directory and check out our video files just to make sure that they're working. And it looks like everything is just fine. I hope you enjoyed following along in this tutorial and making your very own security camera without even having to have a motion sensor on it. You're only using the video. And yeah, that about pretty much wraps everything up. Uh, this has been Kyle with another OpenCV tutorial. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for more, and thanks for watching.